in the end. Hooli slap and hooli hug. Today, President Trump makes his debut at the United Nations General Assembly. How will his America First message be received by the UN's World First Mission? Politics took center stage at last night's Emmy Awards. A surprise cameo by that guy, Sean Spicer, left the Hollywood audience and Melissa McCarthy there, stunned. Welcome back to Early Start. I'm Christine Roman. But not the cameras. They were ready with they all their ready. political character shots. I'm Dave Briggs. 30 minutes past the hour. We'll play you more political jabs at the Emmys last night in just a bit. But first, all eyes on President Trump as he heads to the U.N. on the eve of his first address to the General Assembly. A lot on the line for this president, who's been a frequent critic, critic of the United Nations. Last December, President-elect tweeted this. The United Nations has such great potential, but right now is a club for people to get together, talk, and have a good time. He's even complained, so about, he's even complained about the marble tiles in the past uh, behind the podium. said he'd love to replace them with uh, some beautiful marble gold? slabs. <laughs> Not gold. They never took him up on that offer. Today, the president has meetings scheduled with French President Macron and Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu before uh, hosting a working dinner with Latin American leaders. With everything that's going on right now, the president is still finding time to tweet. And often, on Sunday morning, uh, mm. uh, basically on the eve of this important international debut for him, he's retweeting a video that appeared to show him knocking over Hillary Clinton with a golf ball. In another tweet, he took a swipe at, at Kim Jong-un, calling him Rocket Man. We get more from CNN's Athena Jones. Good morning, Christine and Dave. This is a huge week for President Trump. He's taking his first turn on the most high profile stage in the world. We're talking about 193 member nations taking part in the UN General Assembly this week. And those world leaders, a lot of them are eager to take the measure of President Trump. They're also going to be eager to hear what kind of message he delivers when he speaks before the General Assembly on Tuesday, especially given the fact that Trump has been such a critic of the United Nations. As a candidate, we heard him talk about about uh, what he called the utter weakness and incompetency of the United Nations. He said the UN was not a friend to democracy, uh, not a friend to freedom, and not a friend even to the United States. Uh, now, it's not clear how much he's going to be tempering that criticism when he speaks on Tuesday, but we did get a little bit of a preview of what he's going to say from his national security advisor, H.R. McMaster, uh, speaking on Fox News Sunday. Watch. Well, he thinks the, the speech is a tremendous opportunity, obviously, to reach so many world leaders at the same time and to emphasize really three themes. First is to protect the American people. The second is to promote American prosperity. And the third is really to, to help promote accountability and sovereignty. So there you heard General McMaster say this speech is a tremendous opportunity for the president to address so many gathered world leaders. It's also a chance for world leaders to hear from the president about how he's going to promote this America first agenda that we've heard him talk so much about, how he's going to promote that at a meeting that is of a global organization that is aimed at solving global challenges together. One key meeting he's having late in the week uh, is a lunch on Thursday with the leaders of South Korea and Japan. The key topic there will, of course, be North Korea and its nuclear provocations. Christine, Dave. Linda Jones, thank you. A key part of the president's address to world leaders tomorrow night will be the North Korean nuclear threat, especially in light of last week's ballistic missile test launched over northern Japan from Pyongyang. For more, we turn to CNN Global Affairs correspondent Elise Labu. Well, Dave, Christine, we do expect the nuclear threat from North Korea to feature prominently in President Trump's address to the U.N. General Assembly on Tuesday and to top the agenda during his meetings with other world leaders. Now, this annual U.N. gathering comes on the heels, as you know, of North Korea's latest missile launch last week over Japan. And that was in defiance of new U.N. Security Council sanctions, which were imposed because of North Korea's nuclear test earlier this month. And you do see the Trump administration ratcheting up the pressure and rhetoric on North Korea. On Sunday, the president alluded to those fresh U.N. sanctions, taking a swipe at the North Korean leader Kim Jong-un in a tweet saying, quote, I spoke with President Moon of South Korea last night, asked him how Rocket Man is doing. Long gas lines forming in North Korea, too bad. And his top national security officials fanned out across the Sunday morning talk shows. U.S. Ambassador to the U.N. Nikki Haley told CNN's Dana Bash on State of the Union 